test, test. I saw the thing. Okay, that looks good. And it's picking us up here. So I think awesome. that's fine. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let me go ahead and pause this. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Thursday, September 26th, uh, 2024 meeting of the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority. My name is Drew Coombs and I'm uh, chair. Um, <clears throat> uh, with that, we'll go to roll call vote. Uh, uh, Director Greer, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Director Stone. Uh, here. Uh, um, Director Sue. Uh, here. Uh, Director Combs is here, and I hear we're waiting for Director Barragon or alternate Director Barragon, who who should arrive, and we'll we'll make a note for the minutes when she she arrives. Um, and um, D Director Pine is, is is absent, and there'll be no alternate for, for the county for this this meeting. Um, uh, with that, we will go on to approval of the uh, agenda. Um, I'll call for public comment on, on item two approval of the agenda see no no public comment i'll bring it back to the dais and um, entertain a motion or any comments motion to approve the agenda a second all right we have a first and a second uh, first from director sue a second from director stone um, to approve the agenda um, with that, we'll go to roll call vote. Uh, Director Stone? Yes. Uh, Director Combs is yes, and Director Sue? Yes. Yes, all right. Um, uh, the agenda was approved with um, the um, approval of, of all three directors present. Um, with that, we'll move on to public comment. Uh, pub under public comment, individuals may speak on a non-agendized topic for up to three minutes. Um, I have um, one public comment card from for, for uh, for public comment uh, for um, uh, Jerry Hearn. And so uh, um, feel free, and right, it was general public comment that you wanted to provide the public comment for? Yes. Okay, cool. please. Thank you, uh, Chair Combs. Uh, I just have four items that I wanted to just bring to your attention, uh, but because they're, uh, they could be of interest to us here, or well, a couple of them are for sure. Uh, the first thing is that, that on uh, October 11th, Climate Resilient Communities, Nuestra Casa, Rise South City, and Thrive Alliance is putting on its second uh, climate summit, all days climate summit. Um, and they're, they're addressing adaptability and sea level rise is gonna be part of that. I believe that uh, 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 Ruben Abricca is gonna be one of the speakers there, as I, I think. And anyway, it, it should be a very interesting thing. There's a lot of a lot of community people will be there, which is one of the things that we at the CRC are trying to do is get the community out and speaking to these issues. Um, the second thing is I was uh, I zoomed into the one shoreline meeting on on Monday, and there were two very interesting uh, presentations by Stanford graduate students that came at the end of the meeting. One was about the effects of groundwater levels on sea level rise, which is really something that I think we I, probably Tess has already started working on that. But uh, the information that keeps coming out about it is that's going to be far more impactful than we've imagined in the past. And so it's something I think that uh, we ought to think about. And uh, the other one was about uh, the, the other presentation was about community uh, uh, mapping is what they call it, a mapping of groundwater spots and things of, of uh, nature related to water. So I think both of those uh, are available. Those, those uh, I think they were both, uh, the whole, whole thing was uh, uh, videoed, so I'm sure they're available. And I found them very interesting. So uh, if you're interested in that, just contact me or Lynn Matterman has all that information, of course. The third thing is that um, last, Friday we had, uh, I can't remember what it is, it's probably the 35th time we've had a cleanup in uh, San Francisco Creek. It was the annual, annual coastal cleanup day. And uh, we at Grassroots Ecology had sites at both Cooley Landing, well, Cooley Landing, Willow Road, Alma Street was a big one. And then I took a group to University Avenue. We collected about uh, 
six or seven dumpsters full of trash just at the San Francisco Park, not including Cooley Landing. So it was very effective. I had a great time with a young a group of uh, wonderful families that live right at University in Creekside Drive who they said next year they're just going to keep coming back here every year because they had so much fun cleaning up stuff. So uh, it's, it's, it's one of the, uh, I don't know how many people we had. I think we had over 100 people at Cooley and it looked like about 100 people at Alma Street. So, and I would say probably 75% of them were under the age of 15. So it's very uh, uh, inspiring to me that we've got so many young people getting engaged, physically engaged, so at such an early age. And the last thing I just want to say is that I had the great pleasure of taking uh, Deneen and Brooke, who's no longer with us, but hopefully we'll stay in contact with her, out to Jasper Ridge to tour the lake and look at the dam and talk about all the upstream issues, which are uh, very very connected uh, along the entire watershed. And uh, we, we had a good time, and I found them to be very engaging and uh, very smart. They really know their stuff. And I want to once more offer and say, I'm a docent out there, and I'd be happy to uh, provide tours to anybody, including all the people in the audience, if, they, if they're so interested, to be able to look at that part of the uh, watershed that you, normally you don't get to look at. So anyway, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Hearn, for the, the public comment. And, and, and thanks for um, the information on the, the cleanup and that, that it was, again, a, a, another successful year. It's great to hear. Uh, Chair, can yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. of course. I uh, just want to uh, uh, introduce uh, the Vice Chair of uh, Santa Clara Valley Water District, Director Santos is here. He is uh, my alternate uh, serving mm -hmm. on, uh, assigned to San Francisco Creek JPA. Yeah, so he's here today. Well, welcome, glad, glad to have you. And then thank you for, for the introduction. Um, Chair Combs, I have one public comment um, that I have been asked to read in. Oh, sure, please go. It's from uh, Jim Lewis. His question is, will the Sunset Magazine building proposed development affect the San Francisco Creek water flow that may render all prior consultants' reports invalid and may need to be done all over again? Please add to your agenda next month to discuss the potential impact of this project to the important work you are doing. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for that, that, that comment. Um, I can generally acknowledge that obviously we are aware of of the uh, the, the project that uh, being proposed at at eighty Willow, and so um, um, and, and I'm sh sure that um, as that proceeds, there will be lots of analysis from lots of different perspectives, um, and if there is a, an appropriate role for the JPA to play, it, it will it will play. Okay, um, with that. Uh, um, I will go on, uh, assuming there's no more public comment. Okay, I will go on to item four, approval of meeting minutes from August 22nd, 2024, uh, regular meeting of the board. Um, is there anyone who would like to make a public comment on agenda item four? All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the dais for uh, a motion or uh, any questions or discussion on, on, um, on the, the minutes from August 22nd. I'll approve the meeting minutes. I'll second that. All right, we have a, a first from Director Stone and a second from Director Sue to approve the August 22nd, 2024 uh, meeting minutes. And with that, I'll go to a roll call vote. Director Stone? Yes. Uh, Director Combs is yes, and Director Sue? Yes. All right, um, so all directors present voted to approve the meeting minutes from August 22nd. Um, with that, we'll move on to item five, uh, review and consider authorization for executive director to enter into an agreement with H.T. Harvey for continued execution of tasks required in REACH-1 in the REACH-1 mitigation monitoring program. Um, I'll turn it over to the executive director to see if there is a, any additional um, comments you want to make or uh, statements you want to make about this, this item. 
Sure, just very briefly, and as you have in your board packet, um, REACH 1 has been, of course, successfully completed back in 2019. As a condition of the construction of that project, the Regional Water Quality Control Board and other agencies imposed certain permit requirements upon us. HD Harvey has been instrumental in ensuring our compliance. Your staff report explains the role of three different consulting entities to support those permit compliance activities. This contract with HT Harvey provides um, services that include year six quantitative monitoring, year seven quantitative moder monitoring of the refuge islands, preparation and submission of the year seven out of 10, I should say, annual monitoring reports, habitat maintenance monitoring recommendations, and year eight monitoring of the levee enhancement area. This project or this work is for a little bit more than $54,000. It has been budgeted as part of this fiscal year's expenditures. So this is just your authorization for me to finalize our uh, contract and agreement with them to execute this work. Okay, um, let's first, I, I see that Dr. Bergon, I think has, um, Come so yeah we'll, we'll we'll hold him oh you have to have, sorry please go <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> um, okay uh, let's um, um, I'll, I'll bring it to the dais to see if there's are there any questions uh, clarifying questions about agenda item five I have a, okay. a quick question uh, for Margaret that uh, so. Uh, as I read this uh, uh, explanation on their background, uh, I just want to make sure I'm reading it correctly since uh, I didn't have the um, uh, history of how this uh, come about. Um, so uh, for the uh, REACH-1, um, uh, as part of the permit condition, there is a master agreement and uh, HT Harvey is part of the master agreement or does the master agreement is only with H.T. Harvey? We have a master services agreement with H.T. Harvey. Okay, so um, the other two consultants are not part of this. Uh, they have their own contract with uh, JPA. They do. And this uh, master service agreement is only with H.T. Harvey. That is right. Okay. And also uh, that uh, I, I, I'm not uh, familiar with the uh, term of uh, task order. I, I noticed that uh, it's a, um, a terminology being used uh, in JPA. So I just, uh, uh, maybe it's just a quick explanation for me that, so this task order number four uh, is only for uh, the proposed work that's uh, in the contract and then under the, because there's a master service agreement, there will be future task order number five, task order number six. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Each time <clears throat> there is a specific, like an annual or a uh, multi-annual um, extension of the work to, in, to ensure compliance with permit requirements, we will enumerate the tasks required into a new task order so that their specific tasks are exactly reconciled to the requirements for that year for the permit requirements. Okay, so HT, H, uh, HT Harvey uh, has successfully completed task order number one, two, and three? They have. Okay, yeah, and then um, so the, uh, the, there, there's not a overall estimate for the master service agreement. The cost of uh, the um, service by H.T. Harvey is by when the time comes up for test order four, test order five, test order six. Yes, okay. that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, Director Stone. Have, have there been any documented issues or public complaints with this contractor? Any any concerns about continuing and continuing with this contract? No, there haven't. In fact, quite to the contrary, many of our project stakeholders and regulatory agency 
uh, partners are very pleased with the services provided in the communication and level of skill. Okay. Has that just been kind of informal feedback over the over the years working with this person, or does staff kind of reach out when we're making these considerations to get that input before making this recommendation? These are unsolicited. This is unsolicited feedback that we have received from our stakeholder community. Okay, and just kind of thinking moving forward. I think when we do maybe come back for the board to make these decisions on other contracts, I wonder how if um, if staff could kind of solicit that feedback from from those other stakeholders. I think that's just helpful information to see how they're working with our stakeholders. Sure, can do. Great, thanks. Great. Thanks, and um, for the minutes, I think it was 3.50 that Director Berrigan joined us, welcome, um, who is uh, the alternate representing East Palo Alto. All right, with that, um, I'll open it up for uh, any public comments um, on uh, agenda item five. I have no request to speak at this time. Okay. Um, with that, we'll bring it back to the dais to see if there is um, any additional questions or discussions on uh, agenda item five or our motion. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll move um, uh, for, um, uh, uh, for approval of agenda item four, five. I'll second. Right. So, We'll do a, um, um, a roll call vote, uh, indicate that um, uh, Chair Combs uh, made the motion and uh, Director Stone uh, seconded it, and we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Director Stone? Yes. Director Combs? Yes. Uh, Director Sue? Yes. And Director Bergon? Yes. All right. So um, all directors present voted for approval of agenda item five. Okay. With that, we'll move on to agenda item six, review and consider, a, consider authorization for executive director to enter into agreement between uh, the F SFC JPA and the individual cities of Menlo Park and East Palo Alto for an advance against awarded grant funding. Um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to the executive director for uh, additional uh, comments or analysis on this item. Sure. I think this is a, a pretty simple thing and your board packet has a quick explanation, but for the folks who are uh, listening in and, and may not be familiar, um, one of our JPA projects is to advance CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act project or process along the Menlo Park and East Palo Alto shoreline as part of the Safer Bay project. To do that, we have received two grants that pay for our consultant work and uh, the regulatory agency engagement and staff time. So when we submit reimbursement requests against those grants, there is a time delay. When we have to wait for a long time for those reimbursement funds against the grants to be paid, we are essentially floating um, the payment to the consultants. We either have to take that out of our existing unexpended funds budget, or we have to make the consultants wait. And that's not very fair. So since we are going to, at the end of the day, have all of the money that's been budgeted for the grants reimbursed to us, we are in conversation with legal counsels in both Menlo Park and East Palo Alto, um, all of whom staff and legal counsels who have been extremely helpful and forthcoming in saying, sure, we can do an advance against the retention, that 10% retention that or the amount of money that's held back by these reimbursement grants, these reimbursement-based grants, so that we have a little bit of money from, from Menlo Park in East Palo Alto to see us through the grants, to make sure that we can pay our consultant contractors on in a timely way, and that both of those cities are made 100% whole at the end of the reimbursement grant periods. They're two different grants. They operate on slightly different schedules, but they operate the same way. So it's sort of, from a JPA perspective, taking po money out of one pocket and putting it into another and then putting it back in the other pocket at the end. Well, thanks. Um, just a couple of questions for me. And so the grant money comes into the JPA or to those cities? The grant money comes into the JPA. We pay our consultants. 
And at the end, the grant money comes in and we would pay back the cities. The city. And so in theory, the, the cities are, are floating yep. the JPA. Yep. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and any additional questions uh, from my colleagues on this? Uh, mm -hmm. Just Palo Alto hasn't, doesn't have a problem with this. Just appreciate Menlo Park <laughs> and East Palo Alto for helping out. So if both those cities are fine, I'm fine with it. Um, all right, well, um, let's, we've not done public comment on this item, right? So let, let's uh, uh, open it up to public comment on agenda item six. Request to speak at this time. All right, well, we'll uh, close public comment and bring it back to um, the dais for any additional discussion, questions, or, or motion. Yeah, yeah, Director Berrigan. So I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of our city because I know that um, last year when I was first elected, I had the privilege of going with Ms. Bruce to take a, a tour. And so I know it's a, it's a very big project. Mm -hmm. And so just to hear that we're starting to get some of it um, done and the funding is really exciting for us because I feel that since we share that we share a lot, right? But that little section is one of our most vulnerable. So I just, I'm just really thrilled to hear that it's actually moving along. And I know it, it takes a lot of time and energy and effort. So I just wanted to say thank you from our behalf from the city of East Palo Alto. Yeah, I appreciate the comments. Yeah, this is what I call a sort of medieval European cathedral project. It is generational, um, and and uh, and so it's great, great. That, that we are really um, sort of making those really solid initial steps um, um, to, 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 to see this project on its way. Um, so, okay, um, with that, I will, I will make a motion uh, to approve agenda item six. Um, is there a second? I'll second. All right, and we have a second from Director Barragan, and so we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Director Stone? Yes. Uh, Director Combs is yes. Director Sue? Yes. And Director Barragan? Yes. Yeah, all right. Okay, uh, the, um, the motion passes for zero. Uh, with that, um, we'll move on to informational items, uh, agenda item seven. Uh, and the uh, information item is the executive director's report. And with that, I will turn it over to the executive director. Okay, um, I'm happy to do a really quick read through the, the staff report, but is there anything in particular first that any of you have questions about or would like a little more in-depth review of? And I can focus on that as I go through. I, I, I do have a couple questions, but I think, uh, you can do your report first and then I can ask the question. That would be fine. Sure. Okay. Please don't hesitate to interrupt me. I can stop and address them when we get to that point. So as part of our ongoing REACH-1 permit compliance and um, operations and maintenance reporting, we will be conducting a survey of the levies and their settlement for the REACH-1 area. Um, we are working with our Master Services Agreement consultant, WRA, to get cost estimates to do that, and we should be able to do that before winter, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, on REACH 2, coming to you very soon, a survey on criteria. Our plan is to reach out to the community, do a survey in both English and Spanish. The survey will provide us information not only on how people perceive the vetting of potential alternatives or the rating or ranking of potential alternatives, but also give us some demographics about the Creek, Creekside community, the demographic and the interests of our Creekside community, uh, community members. It is a great opportunity, I think, to get feedback on those two things. So project input as well as understanding our community. There's a link in your uh, packet. You will also have a link. The October For the October meeting, we will have this as kind of a small study session. We won't close the survey until the following Friday, but we will have real-time results to share with you at that time. And then live and in session, probably on a hard copy, you'll have an opportunity to weigh in yourselves. We will add your feedback to the survey, but your survey participation should be a public endeavor. With that information, we will summarize what we've learned. We will post that on our website. We'll provide you a report summary as well. Um, the intention of this, again, is to 
help guide and inform how we choose the alternatives beyond which we have already committed to implementing. Um, we have completed the annual stream maintenance walk, <clears throat> excuse me, walk, and um, our member agencies who have been assigned various action items for cleanup are, um, I think that work is underway before it starts getting rainy. Um, the ad hoc committee on public finance has met once. Um, I, I am working on their action items. We continue to have good coordination and communication with Stanford University. We are looking at how to frame a, an information sharing protocol. Um, as I know uh, Chair Combs recalls from times of yore, our communication or our coordination with Stanford hasn't always been easy. So by having some kind of a, um, a framework that helps us um, decide what kind of information and how we share what information is shared, that relationship can be smoother. And it's increasingly important because their project with Searsville and our REACH2 project are so closely linked um, hydrologically and with sediment transport modeling, we understand we have to be very close communication with each other. So that is moving forward and I'm very pleased with that. We continue to keep tabs on and communicate with Caltrans, excuse me, Caltrain about their um, bridge bank stabilization project near the El Palo Alto tree. They are planning construction for next summer, next construction season, assuming that they get all of their Army Corps of Engineers permitting squared away. Um, we have a December 4th tabletop multi-agency coordinating committee um, winter preparation exercise scheduled. So we continue to reach out to and coordinate with our emergency preparedness and public safety colleagues to make sure that we are ramped up and ready for the winter. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chair, can I ask my question about uh, this, the project before we go to the next project, Safer Bay? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, I thought my first question is uh, under the uh, REACH One work that uh, so uh, you stated that uh, uh, we will be conducting a survey of uh, <clears throat> selected levy cross sections mm -hmm. to evaluate REACH One levy settlement. And you mentioned WRA is doing this work in your verbal uh, <clears throat> presentation. Does this work connect back to uh, the contract uh, which is approved <clears throat> with H.J. Uh, Harvey? Because under their um, scope of work, there is a category called levy enhancement. Is it, uh, is it the same work or is it the two different types? It's, it's distinctly different. H.J. Harvey's work is much more along that when we say levy enhancements, that's the transition zone and other kinds of habitat enhancements that made the REACH-1 project a successful ecosystem restoration project. Um, H.T. Harvey's work, if you want to think about it, is the, the, the living enhancements of the levees, not the geotechnical work. Uh, WRA is doing this under a, a small um, technical task, a, a, a supplemental task order to d answer the question from a geotechnical standpoint, have the levees settled? And to answer the question to the Regional Water Quality Control Board for our O&M, if they have settled by how much over what period of time? So not biological, not ecological, just geotechnical. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and then uh, this, this uh, REACH2 uh, project, can you elaborate a little bit uh, more on <clears throat> um, the, the write-up says uh, um, we're moving forward uh, with sev several REACH2 project elements, including channel widening and temporary uh, wooden flood wall replacement, um, the, and also, of course, the newer, newer road uh, bridge, we, we, I think we have definitely more uh, clear information on the new road bridge uh, work before this uh, uh, as i understand and maybe i misunderstood that so the wra's uh, contract uh, is to look at 
are there uh -huh, any um, uh, better alternatives or revision to or enhancement to the existing uh, alternative that's currently in the EIR, um, <clears throat> which is uh, the widening of uh, several uh, channel sections and also the um, uh, wooden floodwall replacement. So is that work uh, going on and we don't know the outcome of those studies yet? What are the work that's being moving forward um, under uh, REACH 2? So uh, let me try and unwind. I think what I, what I understood your questions to be. And if I overwhelm you with information, please do the timeout sign because I don't want to like bury you with a fire hose of information. We have a grant, actually we have a, a, one grant that has been supplemented by additional funding from the Department of Water Resources that is specifically for channel widening and for replacing the wooden temporary flood wall. That grant has an expiration date. So we are working quickly to advance the way we do the widening work and replacing the wooden flood wall. We are also, in parallel, advancing our CAP 205 coordination with the Army Corps of Engineers. At this time, it looks like the CAP 205 project, which is also for channel widening, will serve to address site widening two, which is on the upstream side of University Avenue Bridge. The DWR grant would fund the downstream widening from University Avenue Bridge. Exactly how those widening projects will proceed is still in some design flux. Before 2022 New Year's Eve, we were at about 90% design. We have had some uh, not only new information about how the creek behaves, but we also have some limitations with real estate. On the downstream project side, the downstream of University Avenue Bridge side, we had per been pursuing diligently widening on the Palo Alto side of the creek. It has a larger cross section to remove material to make more space in the channel, but we had unwilling property owners who were going to make that process expensive, contentious, and lengthy. And if we pursued that, we would probably have lost the DWR grant. We wouldn't be able to complete that in that time frame. So we are now reconsidering our approach in that area. That general area still needs to be widened, but we are now going back to what was Valley Water's originally, original approach was to widen on the East Palo Alto side. It is hydrologically equivalent, but for construction purposes, it will need to be different. So that's a very long way of answering sort of those, those three things are happening. There are two widening sites and the wooden flood wall for which we have sure funding for, from DWR and probable funding from the Army Corps. And um, I actually understand all that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, my question really is that, so the WRA is still studying. So uh, just seems to me that uh, we're not sure uh, ex exactly um, why then the channel like the extent of it, and then uh, they're still being studied. The my uh, it's my vocabulary is called planning planning phase. So this sounds to me that uh, it's um, uh, we're moving forward, actually uh, doing some design work. And so my question really is, how is WRA's work uh -huh, going to affect uh -huh, this work, or is it uh, a, a are there going to be work that's being done now and then need to be changed because of WRA study uh, by the time they finish their study? So what they, they are doing work in parallel or so not in series. So we are looking at. So WRA is doing this yes. work too? Yes. Their master services agreement covers that. 
And then in the meantime, they're doing the planning study. Yes. Kind of a redo the planning study. Yes. And then they're starting the design work for the phase two. Now, I'm sorry, reach two and then uh, the channel widening work. All of it. With the exception of whatever work the Army Corps of Engineers wants to either do on their own. So we will probably give them preliminary designs for widening site two from WRA. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then they will pr progress them to their okay. satisfaction. Yeah. I, uh, well, uh, maybe it takes an offline discussion. I don't want to waste everybody's, uh, everybody's time. It just seems to me that the sequencing doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, but, and maybe uh, when you have time, we can have an online, offline discussion. And D Director Sue, if I could just follow up, what in an ideal scenario, what is the sequencing you think you should see? So. But, but, uh, so the, the way I read uh, this report is it's like I interpret it as, for ex example, the wooden uh, foot wall uh, replacement. There's some design work that's already going on. And uh, in the meantime, the WRA uh, consultant is redoing the uh, alternative uh, for the entire uh, reach two. So, and then also uh, uh, the um, hydrology since the uh, new year flooding, there's mm -hmm. some, uh, it may be, I, I was told that uh, um, it may, uh, the new hydrology may impact the uh, features of the flow protection. Uh, for reach two. So using the simplest, the flood wall replacement as an example that um, if we're moving with the um, design work, do we know how tall the flood wall is going to be? Do we know what's the freeboard we're pro providing? It's like when you're in the design stage, you seems that you need to know all those mm -hmm. uh, details before you can actually do the drawing <laughs> and then do the rebar design or whatever. So I. I, it's just uh, because I'm, um, I'm still kind of new. Uh, I need to. I promise all of you that I will be up to speed <laughs> soon, so that I cannot use this excuse any longer. But um, I, I, uh, I read this as planning and design going on at the same time by the same consultant. Yeah. And uh, then that just seems to me that uh, it may, it may not. Uh, Work uh, in a, um, in in in, the, in in an effective manner. Um, would would it be helpful? And could I offer that we spend some time with our project manager at WRA, and with you, and with alternate member Richard Santos, and have a conversation where the both of you can can walk through their project plan, their project schedule, and you can ask them as well as ask me. And we can have a conversation about that. I mean, that, that's, that's what I uh, said earlier that uh, I think without looking at some uh, drawings or something that this discussion is probably not going anywhere now. So uh, maybe a uh, offline discussion, uh, but I do think uh, it's important uh, for um, uh, the um, JPA board to um, understand this. I, I don't know if my colleague remember that I did have some concerns about the WRA contract. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, since uh, the uh, revenue uh, for, for this body is pretty limited, that uh, we want to make sure that we're not doing work and paying for services uh, that's going to be um, un, un um, undo or uh, yeah. doing it the second time. And I want to make it really, cl really clear that this is not about WRA. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe uh, at the offline discussion will clarify uh, my mind. Uh, thanks. First, definitely no apology needed. Um, and you seem very up to speed, <laughs> to, <laughs> to be clear. Um, and I, I do think it's a, a valid um, you know, just as the, the, the sort of simple reading of like, again, we, we have new data points coming in from yeah. the recent flood. Yeah. Like, are those appropriately factored in at this point, point while yeah. we're beginning to design? Yeah. Like, right? yeah. And, and, and yeah, to your point, 
are we doing work that will need to be redone? Yeah. And yeah. that's a totally valid line yeah. to to explore. Yeah. And 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 you know the executive director has um, offered to like, again have the project managers walk you through that to make sure that you are yeah. are f fully comfortable and understand that. And then I, I say in some way we like sort of have a a, a recap of of where you. Where you're yeah, I'll definitely. Uh, yeah, if if I have any uh, concerns, then it's my job to bring yeah. it to this uh, yeah. to this uh, to this board. Yeah. yeah, and the other the other thing that's uh, that's caused me to have uh, uh, generate this question is that in the report I also said uh, uh, the public and this board will participate in some uh, criteria so that the consultant can determine what's the important thing to incorporate. So. That, in my experience, maybe it's a little different, but in my experience is that that's getting back to the pretty early stage uh, mm -hmm. of any project. And then, but then in the meantime, we're doing some things to me that pretty uh, um, design work. Yeah. It just seems like, I just want to make sure that, mm -hmm. yeah, work are uh, connected and then work don't need to be redo and then uh, our money is uh, spent uh, wisely yeah cool. and we're not sort of advertising some optionality which it actually doesn't exist yeah because like, yeah. right, we're making decisions that, that may take that away right. again totally valid and, line but, of question yeah. and, and just to reiterate the request for feedback about criteria that we're seeking is for those things that are sort of above and beyond what we're already planning hmm. uh, uh, director Barragon so I, I had a um, clarifying question also on REACH 2. Um, when you say the temporary wooden wall, uh, wooden floor wall that, you know, it would be replaced, what's the time length, the time frame for that temporary wall? And um, if you could also put me to speed. So if it's there for a time frame, what's the time frame? And then would it be replaced with a permanent or would it be actually already solved because of the whitening of the channel? Great questions. It would not already be solved by the widening. The widening is one piece. In aggregate, all of the pieces together will bring the risk of flooding down. The wooden flood wall has to be replaced with a permanent structure by the end of calendar year 2027 at the latest. Okay. That is our expiration date for that Department of Water Resources grant. Okay. In a perfect world, we would do it sooner than that, but it's going to take us about that time. Well, as I'm learning on council, it's sometimes good to ask those questions because it might be temporary for some folks. It might seem like a long time for others, but thank you. I um, think I, that that question is kind of a related to uh, my question. Mm -hmm. So these things need to come together as one project. And uh, so we're doing the planning anyway. So I think that's it's related to it. Yeah, I always like to point out in these situations, you know, the Pentagon was supposed to be a temporary building. Yeah, It'll be there when we're all gone. <laughs> so, um, all right, uh, uh, well, um, OK, you are still though, in the middle of your of going through the uh, report. So I'll, I'll let you finish that up and then I'll, I'll open it up to public comment. Okay, not, not very much more to go. Um, on the Safer Bay project, both our uh, member cities, Menlo Park and East Palo Alto are preparing to begin their implementation phases. East Palo Alto has a hazard, hazard, hazard mitigation grant program grant, an HMGP grant. And Menlo Park has a BRIC grant, a Building Resilient Infrastructures grant. Both of those entities are sending out, in fact, Menlo Park has already released their request for proposal, and East Palo Alto will follow shortly. That's a, a, an encouraging and exciting step forward for both cities. Uh, we are in the midst of doing geotechnical investigations in the Menlo Park area that will support the restoration component of the Safer Bay project. This is also part of the CEQA work and it, it enables us to also seek some additional grant funding for the restoration piece that's kind of right in the middle. It's that um, the area that we, we, we call it the Pac-Man Ponds, the area south of Highway 84. 
where there are um, managed marshes, managed wetlands for bird habitat. And we're going to need to figure out how to span that area with a water control structure that protects the habitat and provides sea level rise protection. So that geotechnical work is serving both functions, supporting CEQA and looking ahead to that restoration work. Um, very soon here, we will be sending out a draft uh, project description. This is not required for CEQA, but it's a, a kind of like a, a good best practice for projects, especially on this scale that affect so many different stakeholders. Um, we have received that in draft form together with our project partners and councils. We are, our legal councils are looking at that document and that will be released for public information in the next few days, probably week. And that's, that's it. All right, thank you. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for the uh, update and I appreciate the discussion at the dais as well. Just a couple, one on the survey, glad we're doing that. How is that survey gonna be made available for the public? It is going out on a Google form, thanks to the amazing talents of Ms. Nee. It has, it's, it's very short. It'll take less than about five minutes to take. It's being translated into Spanish almost literally as we speak. It's going to be available by newsletter on our website. We are going to reach out to our uh, member cities who have their own newsletter distributions. So we have a distribution plan for getting it out there. On the East Palo Alto side, we're working with Nuestra Casa and their promotoras, and it's being translated and it will be available on an iPad. So there will be in-person like one-on-one -on -one conversations with residents in East Palo Alto in Spanish to facilitate their participation as well. Great, perfect, thank you. And I know we have a lot of community advocates in the room and probably listening in and for, for them, I think it'd be helpful to be able to share with their networks as well so we can get that out there. And then didn't hear an update on, um, on sediment under the 101 un uh, underpass. Could you give a brief update about that? Sure. We have had a couple of really good conversations with um, Caltrans about their process. Um, I'm reminded of the song Stairway to Heaven and there are two paths you can go by. One of them is a long and arduous and ongoing project approach. And another is a sort of one time only project approach. That's the easier path. However, the cost for removing sediment, once we get all of the approvals in place, um, is estimated to be about one to two million dollars. And it requires a number of regulatory permits uh, from Army Corps of Engineers, from Fish and Wildlife, from the Regional Water Quality Control Board, et cetera. So it's, it's a lengthy process to get us into a position to remove the sediment. It's costly to remove the sediment and it will have to be done again after time. What we don't know, and we are hoping to learn more about soon, is Stanford's more information about what they think they will be sending to us once the Searsville Dam is breached. We are also learning from our consultants at WRA some more very specific and, and very detailed sediment and water flow and sediment transport um, modeling for that particular area around the Highway 101 over, overcrossing. We're getting a baseline. We want to know exactly what the potential risks are. At this moment, even with those two bores being largely blocked, like 50% blocked on the north side, it doesn't look like it creates a risk of flooding. It does raise the water surface elevation, but we have enough freeboard in that area to accommodate. The skinny channel on the south bore creates more velocity, and it moves the sediment out to the bay better than if the three bores were open and it was a quieter area, obviously, because the low pressure just settles out there. So before we embark on this long-term relationship with Caltrans and embark on this one time, probably one time, but expensive endeavor, we want to be really sure that it's money well spent.
not only money in, in terms of acquiring the permits mm -hmm. and going through all of that staff time that's necessary to do the design, you know, analysis, design, and implementation, but uh, you know, the cities on either side of the bridge are going to have to pay for sediment management, and that's expensive. And do you have any uh, uh, estimate on timeline for for the short term? If if it's determined that it would be advantageous for to, us to do that, didn't we think two years? Yeah, two to three years is the Caltrans. Uh, if if everything is on like greased rails, two to three years before it could be removed. Yep. Wow. Okay, and that's be that's because of the because of I mean, is that is that mostly on Caltrans side for? Can you, can you explain that timeline? It's, that it's, it's a combination of Caltrans and we have to go through CEQA. We have to present a, a plan of uh, how would we approach this? Where is our access point? How are we going to dewater the channel? Uh, how are we going to remove that sediment and where are we going to take it? What are the impacts of that sediment removal on the ecosystem in that area? And how are we going to mitigate those impacts? And all of the regulatory agencies that have applicable, applicable jurisdiction there have to sign off on that. And so does Caltrans. Okay. You got to love government bureaucracy. Well, thank you. Uh, that, it's always a more complicated answer than, than open. Not your fault. I appreciate, I appreciate the, the update and um, follow up with you, I think, offline to try to learn more about that and what we can do to see if we can expedite that at all. Okay. Um, any additional? Well, I'll go to uh, public comment on, on this item. I have one public comment card from Thomas uh, Rinfleisch. And so, um, please. Good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to you. Um, I'm Tom Rinfleisch. I live in Crescent Park. Um, our house was flooded in 1998, uh, about a foot and a half of water in the yard. Um, and I moderate our community uh, uh, email list, which uh, consists of about uh, a thousand email addresses. So it's a substantial group that uh, I'm trying to represent here. Um, I, we're 26 years out from the 1998 flood, and um, we're about to begin another winter rainy season. Uh, we have no idea what the uh, storm level is going to be. Uh, we certainly had a major event in New Year's Eve of 2022, and I'm trying to figure out what to say to my community about where we are in this project. Um, ostensibly, from their point of view, we've made essentially zero progress in mitigating or uh, ameliorating the flood problem on Reach 2. And um, I'm a bit disappointed in the progress report that was offered today. Um, the conversation uh, at the end of this, uh, where the, the uh, directors were asking questions, particular director uh, Su, um, I think are getting right at the set of issues. Um, the creek is a system, and it's sort of like whack-a-mole. You can't do a solution by building a Band-Aid one on top of the other. You have to understand how these things interact. What we do with the widening, what we do with uh, levee walls, what we do with the bridge changes, all interact with each other. And we need to end up with a solution that maximizes the flood control that we can implement, but which is uh, acceptable to the public in the sense of the aesthetics of flood walls and uh, the way it impinges on their properties and all of that sort of thing. And so I think the discussion about not having to do uh, band-aids here and there, like replacing uh, board flood walls with uh, permanent, more permanent flood walls, and we don't want to have to redo that effort uh, downstream once we understand how these things interact with each other. And so I was hoping to have in the uh, director's report uh, some of the data that she was talking about at the, uh, in answer to the questions. Things like what is going on with the WRA uh, alternative options? 
Uh, how are they progressing? What options are they thinking about? Which ones appear to be feasible? Which ones don't appear to be feasible? Um, what's the status of the Corps of Engineers' uh, commitment to this project? Um, we were promised last spring sometime that uh, we would have an interim report in August of what the Corps of Engineers was doing and reassessing the calibration of the creek. And I don't recall hearing anything about that. Um, and so we're at a point where we really need to have a better set of inputs to the community. They, these people are very agitated. I, every winter, I get emails from people of, do I stay in my home tonight? Do I evacuate? Uh, do I do sandbags? What, what am I supposed to do? And this is over and over again that is really frustrating for people. And I have very little from the director's report to send back to them that if reaffirms that progress is being made, that we're really doing the right thing, we're going to converge on a solution in some finite period of time. Um, and so I uh, would like to see uh, that the uh, progress made is more definitively defined in this report so that I can communicate it to our community and assuage their issues with what they do this winter and so that they can uh, not have to go through another uh, episode of, uh, uh, you know, really many of them are, are to the point of uh, psychologically very uh, disturbed by uh, having the threat of the flood. And so, I, for example, and I think the questionnaire that is being talked about here is very simplistic. I mean, it talks about what are your feelings about cost, ease of construction, ease of maintenance, co-benefits timeline. These all interact with what the solution is. It's hard to really trade those off without understanding what it is you're going to get for the investment in fixing the creek. And so I, I, what I'm arguing for, and I'm sorry if I sound kind of prickly about this, but it, it's going on month after month after month, and we're making precious little progress in converging on a solution to the creek flooding problem. Uh, what I would like is uh, from uh, uh, Margaret a report that has a list of things that are going on, what is in progress, what's the status of them, what are the major obstacles, how are we going to get around the obstacles, uh, what is the prognosis for when we're going to get this stuff done, and to make that a regular part of the presentation so that um, I can represent what the uh, board and what the JPA is doing uh, to our community. I thank you for your attention, and uh, I, I'm sorry if I came across kind of frustrated, but I have to admit that uh, there's, there is a significant amount of frustration in our community, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to help you deal with that by reassuring people that, that things are moving forward. Thanks. Great. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Rinflesh, for the public comment, and I'll say to you what I, I said to Director Sue, no need to apologize. Um, and uh, I didn't find you prickly, but even if you were, that would be valid. Um, I, I think I'll, well, I'll just re respond. You can provide general <laughs> responses to public comment. I'll provide a general response, and, and if uh, any of my colleagues would we'll like to, they, they can also, um, because I, I think it's worth it. It was a, a very, very uh, salient um, and, and, and thoughtful public comment. Um, and so um, I, I think your frustration is, is valid. And I know I and a lot of others share your frustration. I mean, we just learned before your public comment that it will take years to remove sediment. <laughs> Um, that has collected under under Highway One One Hundred One. I mean, like, like years, and that is some of the the process and bureaucracy. I think we've been dealing with f on this project for for, for decades. You, you want to say something? I'll, I'll let you say. Could I add a comment about that? I'm really worried that that would be a waste of money. Uh, the <laughs> physics of what's going on there is essentially a right angle turn where the water wants to go straight south and it has to turn in order to go under one, the Highway 101 bridge. And it's going to pile up against that outside wall. Nature is telling us what the hydrology is doing. 
the fact that the sediment is is banked up on the left side means that there's not much water, there's much water flow there. It's going around the outside. And I think if you spend a lot of money taking that sediment out over and over again, then it's, it's not going to change much to the conveyance of the, uh, the uh, creek under that bridge. So I think that's an example of where we need to understand from a systems point of view, how this creek functions and how we ought to spend our money to maximize the flood control that uh, that we get out of the money. And I, I think on that, I would say that's a, a very valid point. Um, I, I would also say that there would be experts who would disagree with that, 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 that would say that like that, that sediment constrains the volume that can go um, through that underpass and, the, and that um, the, the optimal ongoing flood protection would be to ensure that that sediment um, is, is, is removed and is not allowed to continue co collecting that. I'm not an expert. I don't know what you say it could be, you know, very much the, the, the truth, but, um, you, you know, again, that, that's at the heart of like our process <laughs> that, that, that has caused to some degree, um, the paralysis at times, you, you know, these projects were proceeding along, um, to some degree, even at, at a, a glacial pace. And, and we talk about a right turn. We, we had a turn with results of the new data points that came in as a result of the, the, um, uh, the, the new year flooding that, th that really challenged some of the premises that we had made or that had been made in connection to, 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 to reach two projects. Um, and, and so at that point, once that data comes in, you, you have to, 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 that has an impact, like, right, you, you can't, you can't just uh, ignore it. Um, and then of which suggested that with the bridge project, like, right, that we may be just transferring that risk down to East Palo Alto, like, right. And so then that's something that we have to look at. And again, I also live in the flood zone. Um, so, so this is not an, an academic issue um, to me by any stretch of, of the imagination. And I'm not making excuses because like I said, your frustration is valid. Um, one of the key elements to reach to was, was the Newell Bridge project, like, right? Like that has to be completed um, before, before we can, um, can, can really proceed with, with reach to. That has been, which is not a, a project which the JP has been involved with, but but has not necessarily been um, the project lead. That project has gone through, and I know that you as a resident of Palo Alto has followed that closely. That has gone through its own machinations, um, uh, um, which have like um, you know uh, had a direct impact on on that timeline. And again, I don't. I'm just like sort of providing this commentary to like sort of respond in, in, a, in a thoughtful way and, and also to let you know that like I, I hear you and, and, and this is not to disagree with your overall sort of premise, which is like, hey, this is taking too long and it looks as though that is not changing. And, and I just want to make it clear, I totally hear you and, and, and I 100% I, I, I agree with you. Um, and I think regarding your ask around like sort of like the like clear statuses of, of where these things stand, I think is a valid ask. Um, like, right, I, I do know to that the, the executive director does provide those updates, to, but the extent to which we can do them better, um, the extent to which, again, someone like you has followed this closely, is not seeing the updates in the extent to which you want to see it, I think is valid feedback that we need to take and, 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 and sort of look at how we can, can, can make that more clear um of, of exactly where where those things stand so so to be clear i i hear you and, and we will take that feedback um and and respond accordingly and make sure that going forward that like again as it relates to reach two and then many different moving parts um which as you can see like led to some lack of clarity even among directors about like where things were that again we are being really clear about where where these where these things are whether they're grants whether they're where specific aspects of, of the project stand um, I, again, um, I, I, again, like I, I do think that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's something that like, like we will be responsive to. Thank you. Also, I appreciate your comments. Yeah. Director uh, C. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm uh, in total agreement with what you said about uh, a more um, a clear um, status report in the agenda packet. 
I think uh, Tom, sorry, I forgot your last name. I uh, suggested a, uh, a reporting framework. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, maybe um, the board can uh, direct our staff uh, to take that into consideration and modify it. Uh, uh, the, the reporting format based on that uh, suggestion, I think it will probably meet the community's needs uh, better. So thank you. And just to, to weigh in as well for the executive director, I do think that would be really helpful as, as well, getting those more frequent um, updates too and making it, because I, I get these questions all the time by Palo Alto residents and it'd be nice if we can be a little more, little more frequent on exactly where we are trying to achieve these objectives. So thanks for the community suggestion. Clarifying question, if I may. How much more frequently than once a month? Um, I, I think that the once a month is good. I, I think what, and again, I don't want like some sort of ongoing grid mm -hmm. as it relates to reach to and like these are the aspects of the project and then some sort of status columns, like right? And that, that is something that just becomes a staple of the agenda going forward. I think if someone if, if someone thinks otherwise or, or then, then I'm, I'm open to that, but that's, I, I think what I, I, I kind of heard is it would be, a, you know, a key element of, of, of the ask. Yeah, had one of those once upon a time, and the feedback I got once upon a long time ago was uh, too much detail, too much information, take it out. So maybe it's time to put it back in. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure you got that feedback. It's all circular, right? <laughs> it's just like, um, and, and so, yeah, um, uh, Director Barragon. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say yes, it would be helpful to have that um, because we also have our residents always asking. You're telling us this and that, but we want to know. And it's like, okay, now I'll have the information here for you <laughs> with the updates and what um, Mr. Thomas yeah. had suggested. I thought that was a fabulous idea because then it feels like there's no progress, but we know there is progress. And then you could just say, boom, here it is. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Yeah, we can put that in the staff report for both of our big projects. I mean, we can go total tech industry and do like green, red, yellow lights. <laughs> that, that we had that before, yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, well, uh, thank you for the public comment again. Thank you, uh, 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 Ms. Bruce, for being uh, uh, open t to the feedback. Um, so I will, uh, are there any additional pu public comments? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Zena Hammer, you can unmute yourself and speak, please. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we Hello? can. Okay, wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, so 100% agree with um, Tom Reifleisch's comments um, and just really need to see progress overall on this. Um, my question specifically is about the sediment um, under the 101 bridge. Um, have we worked with Santa Clara County Valley Water to see what resources can be brought to bear on this? And I'm talking about both expertise and shovels and money. Um, this isn't the only stream in Santa Clara County. It's not the only bridge. And all the other streams deposit sediment, and it's all part of the Valley Water Stream Maintenance Program. Um, how does that program, how can that program help us? Have we explored that um, fully? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Executive Director Bruce, uh, feel free to respond. Sure. Um, the Santa Clara Valley Water District or Valley Water has a deep bench of expertise. We have been in particular touch with Jen Codian, who is part of the stream maintenance program and has been tremendously helpful. So we have been exploring that, we have explored that. To my understanding, and this is again through their, their staff expert, their stream maintenance program for the entire county does not include, it goes for a period of time, but it does not include the San Francisco Creek at this time. It's not part of their like five-year program. 
They have done sediment removal on the creek in the quite distant past downstream of the 101 overcrossing. The location of the sediment buildup is actually on the San Mateo County side of the creek. So if Valley Water were to undertake sediment management in that part of the creek to remove that sediment, they would need to go through exactly the same kind of regulatory review and permitting and access agreements with Caltrans that we would have to go through. They are absolutely great about providing their perspective, their experience, their expertise, their cost estimates, their you know, per, uh, advice about how to proceed, but they are in no position to make this happen any quicker or any cheaper than we can. N furthermore, it's outside their, technically outside their geographic jurisdiction and their stream maintenance program isn't funded to do this right now. We could, over a long period of time, consider a working relationship or an agreement, um, but I think we may need some significant more information about, for example, the future potential impacts of Searsville Dam sediments in this area before we should approach what that kind of an agreement might look like. We just don't have the technical information about those impacts yet. So what about the San Mateo County and what about the original agreement when this project was completed in 2019? So I can't speak to the downstream of 101 part. This is sediment that is not part of the reach one area. It's part of what's considered reach two. So I don't think that this is something that we can apply to the REACH-1 project retroactively. Um, Ms. Bruce, and, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding, whether it's it's like the Santa Clara County side or San Mateo County side, where the sediment is at is in Cal Trans right-of-way. That's right. For, and we cannot legally remove it without or touch it without their authorization yeah. and concurrence, nor can we do that until we've gone through the assessment process yeah. for all the things I said before. Now, I, th I think that there can be a valid argument that maybe this is something that should have been foreseen and that some sort of agreement could have been worked out with, with, with Caltrans at the beginning or some early part of this process. Um, but, but at this point, moment again I, as i understood the issue is is that it's caltrans right away and and we have no authority to like go and do something with it any more than we have authority to go on the freeway and do something there um without caltrans um approval and going through their whole process and they do have a process that's right and again i i i feel like i'm uh, I could, but I share their frustration. And so, um, but my, I think my only difference between some of what I'm hearing is, is that like I've been in those meetings, like right, and and so like maybe I've been beaten down a little bit too much. Uh, but I've, I've, uh, I, I again, I like yeah, I've, I've, I don't know how that meeting, that last meeting we had with them, I can't tell you how many like Caltrans officials. Uh, were on that that Zoom call, but it, it, you know, at no point did they say that like, oh yeah, by the way, we'll give you a pass here, or oh no, by the way, yeah, maybe we'll do some other thing that's a little bit simpler with this issue. It 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 was no, and and yes, this is definitely our, our right away, and yes, you very much have to go through the entirety of our process um, for, um, for 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 a project like this including this question of where you put the sediment. Yeah, so, but, but I, I, again, thank you for, for the public comment. Um, are there any additional public comments? Yes, there is. Okay. I've been asked to read a comment from Jim Lewis. Please consider hiring a professional publicist to help toot your horn, that is to share in layman language the good things you are doing, what you are accomplishing, and what is planned. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for that, that feedback. Director. Chair, uh, 
I just want to uh, assure uh, my colleague that Valley Water staff um, definitely um, uh, uh, can share their expertise and their uh, experience uh, with uh, the JPA staff. Uh, we uh, at Valley Water, uh, we do uh, maintenance uh, of all the creeks, um, primarily sediment removal, uh, vegetation removal, and erosion repair as a uh, programmatic, uh, so it's not individual creek, uh, and uh, we prepare a, um, a stream maintenance program, a 10-year. So we're now uh, in the process of preparing the third uh, stream maintenance program, which is, means that we have 20 years of uh, experience um, doing uh, stream maintenance, no, we, we've done stream maintenance work for <laughs> since, since day one, but then, uh, the um, mitigation and then a regulatory requirement uh, can mean that so for the last 20 years, we've been doing maintenance program in a very uh, rigorous manner, <laughs> rigorous manner. <clears throat> and uh, it's a 10-year program, go through the CEQA process and have to uh, obtain, I think, nine regulatory agencies uh, issuing permit to our uh, maintenance program. And then uh, there's millions and millions of dollars required uh, for the uh, mitigation, like purchasing uh, purchasing open space uh, and uh, revegetation, uh, just lots of mitigation work uh, required. So, but we did have uh, lots of experience uh -huh, based on the last uh, 20 years stream maintenance program. So. Uh, there's, um, just contact our staff, uh -huh. they'll be uh, happy to share our experience. And uh, I'm sure that there's uh, anything that they can do, uh -huh. they'll, be, they'll be willing to help. Uh, Director Bruce. Yeah, and, and just if I may, with deep appreciation to the technical staff at Valley Water, they have been immensely helpful. So we have been in touch with them and they are a great resource. Um, are there any uh, uh, additional public comments? Uh, Not at this time. Okay. Um, with that, we will close out uh, agenda item seven uh, and move on to agenda item eight, board announcements, information items, and request. Um, very quickly, I'll open up. Is there any public comment on this item, agenda item eight? I have no request to speak at this time. Okay. I'll, I'll bring it to the dais and see if there are any um, board member announcements, information items, or, or requests. Director Sue. Yeah, I, uh, I want to report to uh, my colleague that I will be on vacation uh, end of October, so I will miss the uh, next board meeting, but uh, Director uh, uh, Vice Chair Santos uh, will be here for the meeting. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, and so with, with that, if there's no other uh, announcements or items, then I will adjourn the, the meeting at uh, 4.54. Thank you all.